Hello friends and constant readers, my name is Emily and welcome back to season two of the Dark Tower series. Two things to address. Yes, I cut my hair. If you are not aware, this series was researched and scripted over 2018 and filmed intermittently, not in any particular order. The second thing is that I am going to start a Stephen King book club. If you are interested in learning more about that book club, stick around to the end of the video. Let's get into the meat of the video. Today we're going to be talking about popular fiction versus literary fiction and what that means, why there is a distinction between books. So for those of you who are not aware, I work at an Indigo. Indigo is the Canadian book retail equivalent of a Barnes and Nobles in the US or a Waterstones, I believe, in the UK. And one of the things that struck me when I first started working on the operations team is how arbitrary the sorting of books seems. Why were the Hannibal Lecter books by Thomas Harris in with general fiction when every Stephen King book was in horror? Why is Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood in general fiction when Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler is in science fiction? Why is the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon in general fiction when the Dark Tower series by Stephen King is in horror? The books that I mentioned here are books that I feel like could easily fit either into a genre marketing category or into a literary category. Like they could easily flit back and forth and yet they have been put in these places for a reason. I wondered why. So I started looking into it. It all comes down to who the book industry considers the book marketable to. It's all about capitalism, basically. If the book is heavily rooted in a specific genre and does not deal with abstract cultural problems, then the book is considered popular literature or genre fiction or categorized fiction. Popular literature, genre fiction, and categorized fiction are all books that fall into the following categories. Crime, fantasy, romance, science fiction, westerns, inspirational, and horror fiction are all considered popular literature, genre fiction, or categorized fiction. These genres are more commercially oriented. They actually hold the largest market shares and are generally dismissed by literary critics and academics because they are considered, whether fairly or unfairly, poorly written and escapist. In contrast, general fiction or literary fiction or uncategorized fiction often fall into many of these genres but are placed into the general fiction section of a bookstore because sellers feel that these titles will appeal to a wider audience and that wide audience is those outside of specific genres like i'm sure on booktube on youtube you can find folks whose channel is specifically horror fiction, I'm thinking chapter stacks, science fiction and fantasy, I'm thinking Elizabeth from, crap, I forgot her name, but I will link her on the screen. Like, there are folks whose channels are entirely niche based. Books that you could place in genre, but have a high quality of writing or other special characteristics get put into general fiction. So that separation between literary and genre fiction is at the end of the day all about selling books. By putting a book in a certain marketing category, sellers believe that they are making the best choice for getting that story into the hands of the correct reader. Before we specifically talk about genre fiction, I want to talk about literary fiction, which is fiction that is deemed to have literary merit. Huge scare quotes around that. Literary merit, as in some sort of perceived artistic quality or value. So literary fiction is concerned with cultural commentary. It reflects on the condition of being human. It is often introspective with in-depth character studies rather than being plot focused. It's usually of a slower pace than popular fiction and it is deeply concerned with the style and quality of the writing. So let's talk about my favorite genre. Fantasy literature is the lens through which I have been reading the Dark Tower series. That is just my perspective because that is my academic background. Uh, that is my research interest, 
but as you will see in the next episode, that's maybe not the only thing that we could look at. But for today, we're going to talk about fantasy. Fantasy literature actually falls under the umbrella of speculative fiction, and I'm going to pop the definition on the screen right now. Speculative fiction encompasses any narrative with supernatural or futuristic elements, so fantasy, science fiction, fairy tale, folk tale, and horror all fall under this umbrella of speculative fiction. In scholarship, I've also seen all of these genres fall under the umbrella of the fantastic. Fantasy has been largely ignored by critics and academics. I encountered courses in romance, in horror, in science fiction. They were the bird courses designed for science students or basically students who didn't have any essay writing courses to get an essay writing course easily and be considered that well-rounded student. It was a requirement for a degree. So it wasn't a course that was taken seriously. It was more like a English 101 with a popular fiction focal point, I guess. The idea, I guess, being that these texts would be more fun and accessible to non-English major students. But I would like to argue that fantasy is perhaps the most literary of all literary forms, as it, by its construction, shows the problem of creating a reality within literature. Genre fantasies create this wonderful secondary world and interact with the real world almost exclusively through metaphor. Quote, specifically the fantasy world serves as a double to reality. The secondary, diegetic reality's creation requires a mixture of familiarity with and estrangement from the extra diegetic one. Like dreams, literary fantasies are made up of many elements recombined and are inevitably determined by the range of those constitutive elements available to the author and the dreamer. Continuing on, fantasy is not to do with inventing another non-human world. It is not transcendental. It has to do with inverting elements of this world, recombining its constitutive features in new relations to produce something strange, unfamiliar, and apparently new, absolutely other, and different." End quote. And that is Rosemary Jackson on page 28 of Fantasy, the Literature of Subversion. And it's interesting to me, given that fantasy is so packed with metaphor. It's <laughs> that it isn't taken seriously, that it's seen as escapist and fluffy. How many elements of horror can be read as elements of real world things, right? Like Bram Stoker's Dracula is a way of metaphorizing and touching on the Victorian's fear of sexuality. I remember reading an anthology of zombie fiction and how the zombie is a metaphor for queerness and the other. If you look at some of Stephen King's works and those fantasy elements in there, you can read them as a metaphor for larger issues within society. It's just interesting that people don't take fantasy seriously because it's outside the realms of the plausible, I guess. That the difference between science fiction and fantasy is that science fiction might be far in the future, but it is scientifically plausible. And that is the hard line between fantasy and science fiction. Fantasy is entirely fantastic. Their magic doesn't exist, vampires don't exist, werewolves don't exist, monsters of that variety don't exist, telepathy doesn't exist. All of those fantastic creatures are metaphors for real things. They're not actually real. Whereas in science fiction, the idea that there is life beyond our planet, advanced technology, computers, the internet, space, all that jazz is plausible scientifically, if not possible currently. And I think there's something about the plausibility of science fiction that gives it academic credit. It's why it's very easy to find academics who are studying science fiction. The reason I wanted to start with this discussion of genre fiction versus literary fiction and general fiction is because I feel like there's an argument to be made that the Dark Tower series could be an incredibly valuable teaching tool 
in university settings, in high school settings, in this setting, on the internet, this new wave of scholarship, whatever you want to consider what I'm doing right now. I approached the Dark Tower series as a piece of fantasy literature, despite it being shelved in our bookstore in the horror section with the rest of Stephen King's works. So when I started looking at it, I knew that it was genre fiction. You can see elements of westerns, you can see elements of fantasy, you can see elements of science fiction, you can see elements of horror. Um, it has those like keystone genre fiction elements. Throughout season one, I was looking at it as a piece of fantasy literature, looking at how it subverted tropes and how it followed fantasy tropes. After The Drawing of Three, I was fairly confident in arguing that the Dark Tower series is a portal fantasy set in a fantastic version of the feudal American West. And I think that argument can be made, that this is specifically American fantasy. I can definitely understand why this is put in with genre fiction. Whether or not you agree it's a fantasy literature or not, and we'll get to that in the next episode, it's very much easy to see why this would be marketed to genre fans. Whether they be horror fans, science fiction fans, western fans, or fantasy fans. However, very early on the series gets metafictional, and I have a whole episode devoted to metafiction coming up in the next few weeks. Metafiction is an aspect of postmodernist literature. It's very much a thing that we see in literary fiction. Think Paul Auster, think Samuel Beckett, pretentious assholes of the 20th century loved their metafiction. And I mean that in the most affectionate way possible. Because of this metafiction aspect and this self-reflexive uh, literary critique aspect happening in the series, I very much expected the Dark Tower series to have a body of scholarship within academic da databases. This project I have been working on so long that I still had access to the McMaster Student Library. Like, my login still worked. That's how long I've been working on this and researching this. And I was pretty shocked, actually, to discover that there didn't seem to be any scholarship on this. It seems that because of its marketing as genre fiction, it hasn't been picked up by academics. It hasn't had any scholarship devoted to it, which I think is unfortunate. I would argue that it's both accessible and fun, while also opening up conversations about authorship, the death of the author, genre, art, intertextuality, metafiction, symbolism, postmodernism, and don't forget the modern conundrum of the brand of the author, which is a whole thing to consider in light of social media. In many ways, I'd argue that this series has literary merit. I mean, it's why I've devoted so much time to it. It's why it captured my attention. Most importantly to me, its literary meritness comes out in its questioning and its discussions around the condition of being human, because ultimately I think that is at the heart of this series. Roland's whole quest, that journey to the tower, our participation in it, the repetition, the gyre, that's all getting back to the condition of being human. And that is part of literary fiction. So I'm opening it up to you guys. Remove money from the conversation, because obviously booksellers, publishers, want to put books in the places that they will sell best. They are businesses, um, they want authors to succeed. Do you think this book series is genre fiction? Do you think it's horror? Because that's where I've seen it. It ends up in horror fiction. Do you understand where I'm coming from in arguing that it is an American portal fantasy? If not, I have an episode explaining my point of view in the future, keep an eye out for that. And I think most importantly, most interesting to me, do you think there is an argument to be made for this series being literary fiction? Or, here's another fun thought, is the Dark Tower genre fiction that is poking fun at literary fiction. So before we go, I want to quickly talk about the Red Rum Book Club, which is a book club that I will be hosting for my patrons on my patron page. We will be reading the first six books in King's bibliography. They are the ones behind me. Carrie, Salem's Lot, The Shining, Rage, Night Shift, and The Stand. So we will read a book a month, maybe not The Stand, 
Maybe we'll break the stand up into two, depending on how we're feeling. And at the end of each month, we will have a live show where we can discuss the book together. It will be sort of like the Dark Tower series, season one, where we just sort of spitball ideas, we talk off the cuff. This first goal will be the first six books. So when I hit 50 patrons, the book club will start. This club will be available to patrons at all tiers. So for a dollar, three dollars, or five dollars a month, you will be included in this club, you will be included in the discussion, in the live show, and this will be patron exclusive content. If you are interested in joining the Red Rum Club, you are interested in reading along with us, discussing with us, Patreon link is on the screen right now, patreon.com slash emilykate. The link to it will be in the description box down below, and I would love for you to join us because more discussion is better, right? And speaking of my patrons, we have to thank them for making videos like this and long-form content possible. Patrons, I really appreciate the work that you enable me to do. So until next time, folks, long days and pleasant nights.